What's up everybody, it's Speed here, and today we're going to be following Nisha's Windranger, but most importantly the topic I want to talk about and focus on today is what to do when your lane is kind of mediocre. How do you snowball? What are the farming patterns you should take to make sure that your game does not turn into complete garbage? So really, just so you understand what we're going to be doing, it is what do you do when you have a mediocre lane to snowball. Also over on the main Game Leap website, I plan to do some more content in terms of pro replays. Usually I focus more on doing the pro replays for YouTube. But I want to do a few for the main website as well. In addition, I'm doing Random 6K. If you don't know what that is, Random 6K is where I basically play pubs and I analyze my own games so you can get in the head of, you know, me, a pro player. Because typically when I'm doing these pro replay analysis, I have to, I, not completely guess, but somewhat guess on what they're thinking and what their opinions are. But when I'm doing my own replay analysis, I can give you exactly what I'm thinking and show you exactly how I win my games and how you can do it too. So in this game in particular, they actually picked the Wind Ranger relatively late into the draft. I believe they saw the Viper at the time and they knew that, you know, Viper is one of the hardest mid laners to lane against in Dota. And as a result, they pick up this Wind Ranger. In addition, it's very hard for VG actually to catch Wind Ranger. They have a Tiny and a Niti, two heroes that like, they're definitely not the best at catching wind. And, and then Troll and Viper do very little to Wind Ranger because they're primarily focused around right clicks, especially the new Viper, who is primarily now a uh, physical damage or right clicking hero. So I really like the Wind Ranger pick, but his landing stage is relatively hard because it is still a Viper after all, right? Viper is one of the strongest laners in Dota right now. So as we're going to see, as we speed through the lane, he eventually will get ganked. So he ends up going down here, right? Pretty early into the game. He has 20 last hits, so his last hits are not bad. His net worth is not terrible, but things aren't looking fantastic, right? However, he does have a bottle. And he does have power shot, right? I mean, that's just the reality of his kid. He's still in a position to actually do all right. And now the first thing we see is he picks up a regenerant. So this is a, a quick little point I want to make after I saw this clip. I'm like, okay, everyone needs to see this. When you get a regenerant, guys, you have to abuse them. And I mean, abuse them. Regenerants are the best early game rune in the game when you get them with the bottle. By far, by far. Because what you need to do every single time you get them is use them to their maximum value. He could have walked back mid, right? But instead what he does is he uses power shot to hit two camps at the same time, right? Now, power shot does get its damage reduced when you hit multiple camps, but you see he's going to the back of the wave, the back of the camp, I should say, to actually nuke it out every single time so he can hit multiple camps and essentially increase efficiency. That's it. It's really good, really efficient, and should be done on every single hero with an AoE nuke. Whether you're a Lina, a Viper, a Storm Spirit, Wind Ranger, Alchemist, does not matter. SF does not matter. If you get a regen, you can even do what they're doing here, secret. They have a support mid, right? The Tusk is mid lane, and the Wind Ranger is chilling in the jungle, having a good time. In fact, the Tiny even comes in here, and, and they get a kill onto him, and overall, just kind of a great start for him. In addition, oh, this is the best play. Like, oh my god, in Twitch chat, they also hyped this up, which I was glad they actually saw it, because I didn't think anyone saw it, but most of Twitch saw it. Look at this stack, guys. If you think your awareness to the clock is good, think again. This is what we call awareness to the clock. Gets a tiny kill, 656, instant power shot, stack. Oh, my, oh, that is beautiful. And that's one of the main things you need to be doing. So you might be like, well, speed, I don't have the attention to the clock to do that. Lucky for you, you simply do not have to do that. All you have to do is like the video. No, I would appreciate it, but all you really have to do is simply stack. Just stack more. I watch a lot of mid laners and they don't stack. Guys, you need to learn right now how to look at the clock. These top players stack over and over and over again when they can take advantage of them. You need to start stacking when your lane is terrible. He has not laned since the last like two minutes now. Because frankly, if he did, he would get abused because he's against a Viper. So when you have hard lanes and you're a hero that can jungle, and when you get to the level where you can jungle, just jungle. It's that simple. All he has to do now is hope his tower doesn't get taken, right? Because there's two main priorities when you're playing mid lane. The number one priority is to defend your mid tower and push out the wave. But if that's not an option at all, or you can have someone else do it, in this case, he had someone else do it. He had the tusk do it. You can just straight up jungle. That's your backup option, right? Ganking, I don't even like to put on the list. Frankly, if your lane is kind of trash, rotating is one of the worst things you can do because frankly, you're just going to fall even further behind. And that's usually people's instinct, right? The instinct of the average player is to just go gank. They're like, oh, I can't lane. I guess my option is to just go gank. No, what you should do is you typically want to try to make whatever efficiency play you can in the jungle. And then after the enemy mid laner leaves or goes and makes some play, you go take the lane, right? That's kind of all that we're seeing here, right? The Viper pushes in the mid lane. So he's like, okay, I guess I can take it. Once again, Viper pushes in the lane again, and we're going to see the same exact thing. He just takes the mid wave. In addition, he even uses his nuke. Now this is Wind Ranger specific, right? Doesn't apply to a lot of other heroes, but at the same time, it's like, okay, regardless, you see how heads up he is about his efficiency and, and his ability to just get in the waves. Same thing here. 
Is he trying to kill the Viper? Is he looking to gank? No, he's looking to push out the wave and continue his efficiency trip. Right, uh, like, it's kind of that simple, but I don't think people realize this. Consistently looking for opportunities to nuke. Now, let's say he was a Lena or a Co-op or an Alchemist. You'd be dragging these two camps together primarily because this is too far away, right? For, for your hero like Windranger, you can do that. So whenever you're playing a hero, you should be thinking about everything you can possibly do to maximize efficiency. If I'm a Shadow Demon, I'm going to do this exact same thing, right? Because I can. In addition, for all you bottle buyers, right? If you're a bottle hero, regardless of what hero it is, if you buy a bottle, this is a great play to make. He rips through the jungle, doing a great job of keeping his efficiency up, some of the highest CS in the game, right? Fourth, which isn't too bad for a bad lane. And then he jungles the closest camp to his base. Why is this important? Why should he jungle the closest camp to his base? Well, this is efficient because when you are a bottle hero, you love going back to base. Usually it is very much frowned upon within the Dota community or just Dota to go back to base. It's very inefficient. You'll typically be yelled at by any sort of coach that you go to. But in this case, it's actually a good play where you have no mana, you have barely any HP and a bottle. I've been seeing this a lot with a lot of bottle heroes, so I want to make sure I include it in the video because it's something I highly recommend. In addition, you can see he literally TPs back in with only like 300 mana, but because he has a bottle, he can get it all the way back up to around 500. In addition, he gets a rune lucky guy. But yeah, like I know this might seem insane to people. Like this is genuinely insane to people what he's doing right now, but what has he done for the last four to five minutes? He's jungling. He pushes in waves and jungles. I know this is upsetting for some players because they'd be like, Oh, but we're losing our lane speed. I, I, I need help. I guarantee half of these morphling players, if they got kicked out of their lane and were getting their safe lane tower taken, what they'd do is they'd be like, please, I need a mid lane gank. Like, guys, relax. Just do what Matama Man's doing if you're in this position. Go hit some jungle creeps and look for some safe farm. Don't force your mid laner to take some awful fight just because you think that you need to protect a tier one safe lane tower, which are typically considered to be the least valuable towers in the game or the least important to defend as they are hard to defend. And, uh, you know, it requires TPs across the map and it's very bad to funnel yourself into one area. It's bad for farming and it's bad for fighting. But regardless, as you can see, he's Wind Ranger, a hero that has some of the best ganking potential in the game. And yet he is still not ganking. He is pushing in jungle camps. And finally, because he Viper leaves his lane and he has a cart, he decides to pressure to mid tower. But as you can see, when he's pushing the mid tower, he can sort of make this play onto DY here on the Elder Titan, only because he has his tusk nearby, which is simply a good play, right? Nice little, nice little movement there. But really, what you can do to make space, guys, and what I want to be clear about, this is one of the best plays to make in terms of space in Dota. What just happened after he pushed this mid tier one tower? What just happened? What was the reaction? Viper, even you know, technically ET, tiny, even sort of trolls in the area. Why does this happen? Why does this happen? It's simple because they don't want to give up their mid tower. So if you're trying to create space and relieve pressure from your safe laner, one of the best things in Dota to do is hitting the mid tower. I know crazy guys, you can hit a tower to make space. And specifically this applies to mid tier one, right? It's particularly good in other areas as well, but look at his morphling now. Look how free this is. They don't even care at all that this tower was taken. In fact, it's like, it literally doesn't change anything. It could even be better for the morphling as the wave will push further in, allowing him to take deeper jungle and then, then the wave. So overall, it's like, I just love this play. It's so clean. It's so basic and unbelievably reciprocal in bubs. I hear a lot of people saying like, oh, speed this a pro match. My teammates would never do this. This requires zero teammates. It requires zero teammates to go and hit the mid tier one tower. If your carries are, are or offlaner is greedy, that's all you have to do. You push in the wave. And if you think the mid tier one is safe, you hit it for a little bit. Do not die, right? If they have heroes with good catch, play relatively safe, hit it a couple times, force the rotations and then get out. And you will notice a lot of results. It, it, it works unbelievably well up until infinite MMR. It literally works for forever. Now, finally here, he makes his first gank of the game. Main reason being that Matuma Man is farming top. They see the Omni Knight alone bottom and he makes a movement with the hero. Also a smoke, right? Basically only making movements with smokes. But when you make movements with smokes, what's important to note is that it's quick, it's fast, and they see the mid, right? Because they see the mid, they're like, ah, you know, this Omni Knight is a free kill. And, and that it is, right? The Omni Knight is indeed a free kill. I believe he hesitated on his ulti or he, oh no, he doesn't have it skilled. So he ends up going down and that's just kind of a clean gank. In addition, it doesn't force him to leave their mid tower. Right, because imagine if he ganks, guys. I, I want you to take a step back and think about this because this is really meta to some extent. What would happen this game if instead of just farming jungle and, and pushing him mid, he went to side lanes consistently to gank? What would happen? What would happen? His mid tower would be dead. Guaranteed Viper would take it. Guaranteed. Why? Because Viper does that. That's what Viper does. Viper can just hit your tower. He'll kill your wave and nether toxin and then hit the tower. And then if you're not there to defend it and it's just one lonely Venge, he's just going to kill the Venge or, or at least kick her out. 
right? And as a result, you lose your mid tower. So that is another reason why you want to be playing like this over the whole gang style. I hate gang style based Dota. For gaining MMR, it's so risky. It is so unbelievably risky. What I'm showing you here today and showed even within the PL video, which was the safe lane video, if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's kind of the safe lane version of this video to some extent. And, and th that's just really what I recommend. It's it's done by pros, so clearly this isn't some pub strat. This isn't just like, oh, free way to gain MMR, but you're not actually going to get better at Dota. No, this is what they do in the pro scene, because this is how much they value the mid-tower. You can literally create and hold pressure off by playing mid and only mid. That is how important mid is, in my opinion. I really think the most important area to contest in Dota is mid. And finally, their tower gets brute forced down. Um, you know, they held it for as long as possible, didn't want to kill themselves on it, which I can respect. And uh, overall, once again, nothing crazy. He's like, okay, I'm going to push in a wave, hit a jungle camp, push in a wave. I wonder what he's going to do next. Eh, could hit a jungle camp. Looks like there's a potential fight going on, right? Fight doesn't work out. Goes and pushes in the wave, pushes the tower. You notice how there's always this clean movement between like, oh, what, what am I doing or what am I not doing, right? Fight doesn't work out. Let's see what he does because the fight doesn't work out. Goes and gets a bounty rune. Then after the bounty rune, he's going to push in the wave. After the wave, we'll see what he does. He's actually afraid of a gank, so he's, he's playing a bit defensive, right? But after the gank, he farms the nearby jungle camp. It's this really clean efficiency, especially now that he doesn't feel like he has to defend it anymore. He can now finally just start exploring different parts of the map. And this is just what I like about his play style. I, I love the way Nietzsche is playing this game. It's just so clean. It's so basic and it's so effective. Like, I, I can't stress this anymore. If you can reciprocate what he's doing in this game, which frankly, it's not necessarily that hard. It's just power shotting mid and then walking to the nearby camp that's alive. You will do so much better in your games than everyone else. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. Guys, I cannot stress this enough. Buy early game items. Two knolls, phase boots, ironwood tree, obviously some jungle items as well. He buys a bunch of clarities, takes his mana regen talent, and is playing for efficiency. I cannot stress this enough. And really, that is sort of where I'm going to end up the video because I don't want to even talk about too much more in this video because I think the main points I've gone over is all I want you to think about if you're playing mid right now whether it's playing Kunkka, Lina, any hero that can flash farm and push in mid at the same time I want you to start putting your priority on that and stop the gank train ganking is ineffective guys I don't care if you're a safe lane player and you're like oh speed but now in this video now I'm never gonna have a mid lane ganking trust me you need to worry more about yourself and and more about your own game and and your ability to win your own lane and not your mid laner's ability to help you if you're a safe lane player and you always need mid ganks the problem is you you are the problem because even if you got ganked by a mid laner if you're doing well enough you might one survive or two it literally won't change the, the, the course of the game simply because then your mid laner will be flash farming that entire duration so focus on yourself stop focusing on your mid laner if you're a safe laner if you're a mid laner focus more on yourself focus more on amping your own farm focus more on taking the mid tier one tower and pushing out the way basically to, to really sum it up if you focus more on on the tier one towers mid you will become a significantly better player in any role any role when i am even supporting i'm hella defending mid I, like because people just don't do it and it's so great but thank you guys for watching if you enjoyed please do like and subscribe it helps us out a lot as always and uh you know once again so thanks for watching hopefully i'll see you in the next one and peace are you tired of being hard stuck at your rank over at gameleap.com we have a library of hundreds of guides authored by pro players and coaches covering literally every aspect of dota whether you're looking to master a new hero or role, or just polish up your existing skills, GameLeap is the proven place for competitive gamers to hone their craft and unlock their secret potential. Hit the link on screen right now, right now, to take advantage of our special offer for a 25% discount, guys, 25%, and start your journey today.